Hello my friends, welcome back to another tutorial. I hope you're all keeping very, very well out there um, and painting beautiful scenery, painting beautiful paintings, whether it's abstract or contemporary um, or realistic type of paintings. I hope you're enjoying it and making the most of it. Let's paint something different. Um, I have a canvas here. It is 24 by 20 inches. A nice big canvas this week i wanted to do something which i had my mind on for a long time um it's a beautiful picture of two white flowers um a kind of a soft gray green kind of a background with shadows from the flowers and two beautiful bright flowers white flowers sort of turned and what i really like about this photograph is um the real brights and the shadows on the leaves, it looks just beautiful when you see it. Um, I'll show you the reference photograph in just a moment. So I thought we'd paint that this week, something different with landscape. Um, just to, you know, keep things fresh. Um, I find if, if you're going to be painting landscapes every single time you get a canvas and you're going to paint a landscape, I find you, you tend to get kind of bogged down with the landscape technique. Um, a bit much so it's nice I think just to broaden your 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 painting skills try something different um, whether it be a flower or um, some fruit or a street scene some buildings something like that I think it's nice to try something different um, every two or three weeks it just keeps you fresh and you're learning different sort of techniques as you go along as well so try that try not to stay with landscapes all the time um, because if I was staying with landscapes all the time every single time I was doing a video I'd just probably get quite bored and you know you kind of lose the flair you lose the passion so I think keeping it fresh just trying something different so that's what I thought I would do this week it will be a part two a two-part tutorial um, but it's just gorgeous and I have a frame made for it over here as well um, a floating frame actually I'm going to turn the camera here and just show you I hope you can see that. Um, I have a lovely floating frame here made. I just finished it. It's it's painted. It's probably still wet. But you can see it's just literally two bits of timber kind of stuck together. Um, two by ones prepared. That's all it is. A nice little flo floating frame for that painting. I think that'll look really nice. I was going to uh, paint it a kind of a silver or maybe even like a goldy silver or something like that i'm kind of torn i don't know which colors to go with but i tend to keep my my frames white um because i think that will match most decor in most houses um i find if i start changing colors of frames i'm going with silver and gold and you know, dark brown or black even i find you're limiting your audience when you're trying to sell that painting so i prefer to just keep them white uh, nice and bright and fresh and white so that's what i'm going to do i hope you enjoy the video um thank you to all my patrons thank you so much i appreciate your support immensely so um thank you very kindly let's go and paint i'm excited to paint this i've been wanting to paint this for weeks and weeks and weeks so i'm excited um by the way if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one Zoom lessons with me, I am doing them at the moment. Uh, there's a bit of a list there, but I am doing Zoom lessons one-on-one. -on -one. If you're interested in doing a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me, just the two of us on our own, we'll have a cup of coffee, we'll talk about painting, we'll paint something nice. Um, there's no rush, we take our time, and it's nice and relaxing. So if you're interested, there's a link below, there's an email address below for you, just send me an email and um, I'll send you the details. So let's go. Grab your brushes. I hope you can follow me along. I'll try and simplify it for you, okay? Thank you very much. Okay, let's do this. Let's have some fun with this. Um, right, we'll just get started here now. Uh, so, there's a reference photograph. Um, now that is the opposite way to my canvas, but I, for the purpose of the video and getting everything into shot, on the video i've decided to turn it upright and just put a flower here and the next one then just above it here all right 
Um, I hope that looks okay. Um, I just did a very quick kind of a sketch just where I want my flowers. So let's start. Uh, I think that's very nice. The, the light particularly on the leaves is very, very eye-catching. And that's what I love about this picture. It's just a simple photograph of two flowers, but there's just so much going on. And we can take our time with the detail in the petals and all that. So it's going to be a lot of fun, I hope. I'll tell you what colours I have on my palette today. A nice soft palette just for this background. Titanium white, Naples yellow, magenta, cadmium yellow pale, uh, phthalo blue, lamp black and burnt umber. I don't think I will even need burnt umber or cadmium yellow for this background. I'll just put them on there anyway in case I do want to just add a touch of colour to it. I'm going to dampen my large brush with some linseed oil and turpentine just Make it slightly damp. Um, I perhaps should have oiled the surface slightly. What do you think? Should we oil it a little bit? I think that might be a wise idea because it's such a big background. Um, I think just a little touch of linseed oil might really help on this background here. If you have um, liquid clear, that's a very similar substitute as well. But I just find... With a liquid clear, it makes it too wet. Uh, the linseed oil tends to kind of dry slightly into the canvas, but it just helps to move the paint around. It's not very, very slippery. So with this one piece I have here now, I can see the oil going on fairly nicely everywhere. It's a very, very thin layer. And it's just really, it doesn't have to be everywhere. It's just to help with the paint on the background. That's all just to give it a little bit of movement and allow me to put plenty of color on there very quickly, basically. Because if I don't do this, you know, if you're doing something like this on a big canvas, you're going to be reloading your brush every two minutes and using lots and lots of paint. Whereas by doing it like this, you're using the bare minimum amount of paint and all I want is a very thin layer, all right? But it's up to yourself, whichever way you prefer to do it is absolutely fine. So I'm going to take my large brush. Let's go and start up here looking at the colour. It's a kind of a bluey grey, isn't it? So let's mix a nice bluey grey. Let's try some phthalo blue. Let's get some white. And I'm going to get my phthalo blue handy just next to me with the top opened because I know I'm going to need more very shortly. So I'll have that opened just like that. Um, a tiny amount of thinners in this. You see, this is really a very thin, thin coat that I'm putting on. I'm going to take some black. And be careful with your black. It's a very strong colour. I use a lamp black. Um, I do have an ivory black as well in my box. But I prefer a lamp black because it's just it's a slightly warmer black. Um, I think the ivory black, uh, it has a kind of a almost a browny hue to the black whereas the lamp black um it's just a nice black to use it's nice all rounder now i need to be much darker than that don't i i get some more phthalo blue and a little more black and then because i can see a hint of a warm color in that gray i can see a hint of magenta there as well it's definitely there uh, looking around on the photograph, there's a tiny hint of a magenta in the colour. Now you see how far that's going, just one brushful. And the oil at the back, linseed oil, is really, really helping everything move along. And so I like to work with thin coats when I'm painting like this. I love to just use thin coats of paint, especially for a background. Because if you start putting on, and I get this question a lot, actually, um, you know, do I put on thin backgrounds or thick backgrounds? And a lot of beginners are telling me that um, when they're putting on background colors like this, they become it gets very messy. So what I would say to you is use very thin mixes and build them up. Uh, don't be tempted, and this happens to a lot of people actually. It, it happened to me when I was starting out in my early years of painting. A lot of people, they just put on loads and loads of paint very early on and then it just gets very messy and they find themselves not being able to 
put on top layers so it gets quite messy that's why I've started putting on uh, very thin layers early on in my painting life so I got I kind of mastered the technique of putting on very thin layers and building them up and building them up so that way you're not disturbing the color underneath if you put on another layer a different layer on top you're not disturbing those layers underneath too much a little bit but not too much now as i come down there i've just taken some naples yellow into that mix that's going to kind of make us this sort of uh, a kind of a gray kind of a hint of a greeny sort of a gray you see that i don't know if you can see that on canvas now i hope you can or on, on camera um i hope you can kind of make out the color a little bit I'm just going to start softening it as it comes down and the Naples yellow is perfect for this because Naples yellow is a very opaque color and it softens really nice and it makes colors nice and kind of almost pastel so I'll take plenty of Naples yellow maybe a hint of white just as it comes down um, bear in mind I do want a nice black dark color a blacky color around the back of this flower here so when we come to put in the flowers we're going to have a nice impact so a nice rich dark and a nice rich bright against each other that's the plan let's just hope it works i'm just going to go around all of these very loosely very loose just kind of soften them all together mixing it all up and this is only the early stages this is only the beginning um, I will kind of soften some colors through this as I'm going as well um, so let me see now okay let's just continue on I suppose let's mix up some color and see what happens some blue some magenta touch of white I only put a touch of white in there just to make the color a little bit pasty because the white will thicken it up and i am going to put a little hint of naples yellow in there as well and that will make it even thicker uh, a kind of a pasty color i'm picking up touches of thinners as i go as well just to soften the colors i know we do have a bit of oil on the surface already um but just to thin the colors on the palette just a little bit but don't go crazy with your thinners i find a lot of people say to me you know they add thinners in and it gets very very wet i'd say that's probably the trick with oil painting is you need to get your your mixes not too wet but not too thick and dry either it's a very kind of a fine balance i think uh, with oils and if you can master that you're you're really well on the way you really are so i'm just going to add a bit of that blacky color in there and you can see actually how thin this is um, you can even see the canvas grain through the mix now some people don't like that other people don't mind to be honest i don't mind seeing the canvas grain through my paint because it's a thin a thin coat um, you could just add thicker color over it as you're going if you like if you want to create that very thick kind of a layer it's entirely up to yourself really now I'm just going to go with a little bit more blue and um, you see this lovely shadow we have of that flower here there's a lovely dark shadow there I'm going to just try and put in a hint of that a bit of blue a little bit of black a bit of blue so we have all sorts of darks and lights going on in this background um, i do particularly like that shadow coming down you see those shadows is casting a shadow onto a surface a bit of glass perhaps or something like that um by a window but it's adding a beautiful shadow to create beautiful shadows and i want to try and capture that feeling if i can and it's just going to kind of fade away then it fades up doesn't it out of the painting let 
little bit of a, a lip there coming down um, and then there's a little bit of a point here soften that away I'll take a touch of phthalo blue and magenta just around here as well I'm just popping little touches of blue in here and there because the blue will push the shadows back into the background and they create depth so if you want to create depth and distance if it's something like this or a landscape add touches of blue into your mixes and it pushes everything way back into the distance but you need to be careful not to overdo it with the blue because it can get quite overpowering so I'm going to come down and put a nice dark colour behind this flower. I, I see a beautiful, beautiful dark colour just there. I'm going to take some phthalo blue and a little black. I'm being careful now with the black because it's a very strong colour. A touch of magenta. And I'm just going to put that around my flower to about there. And just around here. And then I just want to kind of soften this away outwards. Take a touch of magenta just to warm it slightly. And if you find this a little bit complicated now, you could just simplify it by putting a simple plain background into your painting. Okay, you don't have to try and, you know, copy what I'm doing. But because this is a big canvas, I really want to put a a decent amount of effort into this um, this painting I, because it's a nice big canvas I feel we could learn a lot in a tutorial like this if we take our time and just have a bit of fun so let's just again a little bit of blue um, I'm going to go around the back of this flower here adding a little touch of a warm color and I know I'm probably losing a lot of the petals, but we can just work them in again later. I'm not really worried about losing the drawing. Um, we can just pop them back in later and make it our own. We don't have to be exactly the same as the photograph. All right? So don't worry too much. I'm going to put a little touch of blue. So you see now what I'm doing is I'm mi mixing just paint on its own. And it's sitting much better on the thin background that I put in. So that's why I like to put in a thin background and add these thicker paints over it later. I'm going to make these a little more prominent, okay, just like that. And uh, just kind of soften them around. We use a soft kind of a brush if you want just to soften the edges you see look just soften around the edges so we don't lose the shape but you can still kind of see them can't you just very gently same here just going to kind of soften that out so we have a nice dark there i like that dark that's quite nice i'm going to put some purple and i'm going to really now start darkening this side up here because what I find, and this is a mistake on my part as well, and this just shows you how I'm even learning as I go as well. What I find is sometimes, when I'm looking back at my videos, I always say to myself, and it happens almost every single time when I'm painting something, I always think to myself, I should have made the background darker. It's kind of strange, isn't it? Uh, when you're doing it, you're not, you don't notice it, but when you stand back afterwards and look, you realise it should have been darker, a good bit darker. So I'm going to go nice and dark now with this background, really dark, because I really want those flowers to jump out of the canvas later on. So I'm just going to take lots of dark and pop lots of dark colour in there. Softening very gently here and there. I'll leave this area. I want to lighten this as it comes down and here also. Um, so I'm going to leave that for now and just concentrate on getting nice and dark up there. And I suppose as well, you're kind of suggesting to the viewer that there's 
a hazy background there's something going on up there but it's kind of hazy do you understand what i mean so look i pick a bit of black pop a little bit of black in there and i can also see hints of a dark green in the background as well i don't know if you can see it what you could do there is download the reference photograph you'll see the link in the description if you just download that and take a look at the reference photograph close up you'll see there's a hint of a kind of a bluey green here and there as well and it really does add it adds to the painting and it adds to the photograph rather so we have a suggestion of bits of green here and there as well and it looks really nice so i'm just going to kind of leave that now as it is i'm not going to overdo this area too much maybe just add a hint of blue in there just to give it a bit of depth and a touch of a blacky color just at the bottom here with my brush just softening it up so i'm just going to stop for one moment just for a moment stand back and take a look and i know that kind of looks maybe a little bit funny at the moment but it will come together don't worry i'm going to take a touch of yellow into this dark color i'm going for a kind of a muddy greeny color and i'm going to just bring you see this shadow kind of comes down and it's a funny kind of a shape actually it just kind of disappears out then doesn't it There we go. Maybe soften that together just slightly. Take a bit of the blue. Pop a little bit of that blue in there. You see, it's kind of going a hint of a green, isn't it? This will all make sense later on. I know when you're looking at a picture like this and you see all these odd shapes, um, you think, you know, you just think to yourself, no, it doesn't look right, there's just something wrong. But then when you paint in the flowers and stuff like that later, it suddenly just kind of comes to life for some strange reason. It's very, it's very strange the way paintings work like that. It's the very same with landscapes, actually. Um, I've often made mistakes in a landscape, say, painting trees or whatever, or a, a bulk of land coming down or a hill or something. It might look funny when you're painting it, but then when you're finished the painting, you stand back and you say to yourself, wow, I can't, you know, that was a kind of a happy accident, I suppose, and it just adds to the effect. So, you know, what I would say to you is don't try and get every single thing perfect in your painting as you're doing it. Because later on, when you're standing back, you'll see those little imperfections and they may look even better, make, make the painting look even better. So just, you know, have a little faith, that's all. Try not to be too worried about something not being absolutely perfect every time. Just nice and dark here now, like that, look. Soften it outwards. And get a nice dark colour over there. And the wonderful thing about the oils, of course, is that you can soften them like this. Um, if I was using acrylics right now, a lot of this would be starting to dry and it would be very difficult for me to blend colors in but i know i can come back in two hours and that's still wet which i love i absolutely love that about the oils some people don't like the oils for that reason i suppose it's personal taste really isn't it everybody loves it a different way some people like it to dry quickly especially if you're painting outside some people for it not to dry quickly it's up to yourself what you like i'm popping a little bit of blue in a nice rich blue in just here and there because the blue really brings out the shadows i find a little bit up there look let's just pop a little bit up there soften it around i'm just creating shapes in the background basically that's all i'm trying to do create a little bit of movement in the background and I can almost start to see how the flowers are going to jump out 
and look really nice. I can kind of start to see how it's going to look. And I'm quite happy so far. I'll take a little bit of that blacky colour and pop a little bit in. And the problem, of course, is I keep looking at the reference photograph thinking that this flower is very close to this one, like the reference photograph, but it's not. I put the flower up higher. So I have to remember, try to remember that. So I'm going to continue on on this side and come down with all of that. And it does get quite soft. There's like a very soft grey. I'm going to take some Naples yellow, a little white, and mix it in here. Uh, let me have a look at that now. I like that. And I'm going to go in around this shape here. And I'm going to bring that colour down. Again, you can just do this your own way, whichever way you like. All right. I'm just trying to give this an extra little bit of attention because I know it will be worth it in the end if I just spend a little more time concentrating on this side of things early on. It will stand to me later. It will I'll benefit later. Isn't that right? Bring that kind of a soft grey colour down. And it just kind of gently filters off into the background in there, doesn't it? Like so. Take some Naples yellow and a little white again. And it gets lovely and soft and bright down here. I'm going to take a hint of cadmium yellow actually as well. Okay, just like that. You see, I'm just kind of making the brush dance around to create some movement. And you can always soften all of this later anyway with your uh, soft blender brush or something like that, if you like. But this is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm having a bit of fun with this now at the moment. This is quite nice. I'm enjoying it. It's very refreshing to do something like this for a change. Now, there's one thing I want to do to soften those lines. See those lines? I just want to kind of create a sort of a soft effect. I don't want kind of harsh lines with all of this. So I'll just try and create a little bit of a soft effect with those that's all right that's not bad and let's just soften this And again, I know this is probably, might be a little bit complicated for you, but just try it and have a bit of fun. I'm not worrying about up here just now. I'm going to soften all of this together very soon. I'm just concentrating now on coming down here. And it goes into a green, doesn't it? So let's get Naples yellow, which I need more of. So we pop a little Naples yellow in our brush. I'll take a little thinners and a touch of cadmium yellow, just a touch. I think even that colour now is probably okay. And it's mixing with the colours there, you see what I mean? It starts picking up different colours and you get these wonderful soft shades. Again, nice and thin, you see? Nice thin coat. I don't have to go putting on huge, huge dollops of paint on my canvas. A little bit more of that colour, that's quite nice. And you'll notice I didn't clean my brush once. I just wiped it on some tissue, but I did not clean out my brush. Because you're picking up different colours as you go. 
and that really helps with the composition then you see so you're transferring colors slightly from one side of the painting to the next you see I have bits of blue still in my brush look they're coming out Um, take some white, some Naples yellow, a little thinners again, just a little touch of cadmium yellow. Come down here and pop this in, fill that in. I just want to get everything filled in and we can work from that then. I'm going to soften up here, look. Make it nice and soft. And I made it to stand just for a moment because all I can see here is a shine from the oil on the canvas. I hope you can see that shine. I think it's okay. I'm just gonna come up here and try and soften out some of this look. Make it nice and soft. You can move it around. So we're manipulating the paint now ourselves with the brush. Just have a bit of fun. Make it nice and soft. As soft as you like. So let me just clean my brush there for a moment and go back in. Soften a little bit more. We can, and I will, be adding hints of green into this as well, into this background. Because there is a lot of nice green going through this color as well so i'm going to be adding little touches of green into this so so far i'm quite happy with that now and also at the same time i'm trying to imagine what it's going to look like with that nice frame with that black line just around the edge and the white strip of the frame these dark colors will really look nice i hope but i think they will i think they will now, I'm going to come down and um, I'm going to start darkening some of those greens. I'm going to get some cadmium yellow, a little bit of that, a little touch of phthalo blue, a little bit of that, and a touch of black. I just want to, oh, let's go darker than that now, don't we? Come on, let's go darker. Let's not be shy with the colour. Nice thick paint. A thicker layer, again, as I said, a thicker layer will make it stick much better. I need a bit blue. I think that's a little bit cold for me, or a bit warm for me. I need a little bit of cooler colour going through this. A little bit of that, like that look. Softening across. I can just kind of suggest some bits of dark lines swirling across there, just kind of softening in to the background. It's a funny kind of a idea, but it's just to add a little something. Um, get a bit of a bluey green. I'm not worried about the grasses and all that kind of stuff. Let's forget about all of that just for now. Get a bit of bluey green across the bottom here. Soften that in. Then I go dark. With some black, uh, some magenta. Want to get a nice dark section just kind of going around like that here. I don't know what it is, it's probably just a shadow being cast from something. But what I would say to people is just paint what you see. So if you see a dark circle, paint a dark circle. If that's what you see, that's what you see. I'm going to put in, hmm, I'm going to add a few suggestions of, again, shadows. So perhaps one coming across here like that. Could be the suggestion of the shadows from the stems and all that kind of thing. Um, also, we have a shadow coming off of the back of that flower, don't we? I'm going to put a nice dark one in there. 
so I'm going to go like so it's going to come from here it's going to come down like that and down here so I'm going to go down like that and then turn it and come down here like that and I can then kind of just go along and start darkening some bits and pieces There are lots of other, um, ref not reflections, there are lots of other ideas of shadows being cast in the background as well. I might just pop a few of them in here and there. If anything else, really, it's just to add a bit of interest to the background, that's all. And I want to try and capture the feeling of those shadows. I'm just going to darken again. this one just here comes down a little a little bit of a spike there so we get a smaller brush just for this And that's why I was saying I'd like to just take my time with the first part here because I want to really get this right. I really do want to get this section just right. So I'm going to go along like that. Okay, and we have suggestions of other little shadows kind of coming off in the background. It's very, I know it looks kind of quite messy at the moment, but I think once these are softened in, it'll make a big difference. So I'm going to soften those in. I need another brush. I'm going to get a nice new fan brush. These are very cheap brushes. Look, I had, I've had these for years. I've never used them. They're very soft fan brushes. But I think this might do the job without taking too much paint off, of course. Just going to kind of soften them in. Just to create a soft edge. And some of these shadows, just want to soften the edge away just a little bit. I'll stop at that now, and then I just want to add some light into the background. Um, oh yes, before I move on, I said there was a little touches of a greeny kind of a blue up there. Let's add some greeny blue. Stalo blue, a little black, and some cadmium yellow. That'll give us a very nice greeny blue now, won't it? And I'm just going to stand up for this so I can just add little touches of greeny blue here and there. Don't be afraid, just grab your colour and go for it. I know a lot of people will be worried that they make a mess or something like that. But don't, just grab your brush and go, go mad, come on. Pop some in there like that, drag it across. I want to darken just by the flower there. I want to really show off the flowers, so I'm making it nice and dark. Um, I'm going to take again some black, a little blue, and just go in here and again. OK, 
Okay, we soften this around. I like this light up here, I think that's quite nice. And it's not something I planned for, but it does a nice light up there. I kind of I quite like that. Soften this colour out. And this should give you a bit of inspiration now, just to... Don't be shy, just grab some colour and go for it. Just look, it's, it's only paint. Let's have a bit of fun. If you don't have a bit of fun when you're painting, then there's no point, is there? Um... So, I'm going to stop at that. I'm just looking around now just for some little points of reference. Let me get a bit of dark colour and just go around here with a little bit of dark. I think maybe just deepening some of the colours here and there might help. And maybe a little bit of crimson, or sorry, not crimson, magenta with black. Just to keep it warm. Um, Okay, again, I'll darken around here. And it's adding a bit of interest to the painting, isn't it? This is quite relaxing now. I'm enjoying this because even though I know it's not perfect, I don't really mind that it's not perfect, but I'm just enjoying trying something different and you know i i think you should really try it because you will be very very surprised at the outcome i'm going to pop some bright colors in a little bit of white cadmium yellow and some naples yellow i'm just going to kind of start lightening a few points here so for example some of those lights i just want to Lighten some of them. If anything else, just adding a little bit of movement again. And it could also be just suggesting other things that are being cast against the window or the, the panel. It does look like a window to me. It looks like some kind of some kind of opaque kind of a panel that's behind the floors. It's a difficult one to describe, isn't it? But I do love the effect. I really, really love the effect it's giving. I'm just going to start suggesting little points of light here and there. And I'm going to go up there and add some of this colour to the top. Cadmium yellow, some white. You can even just go with that. And let's pop a little bit of that in. Create some nice bright coming from somewhere. A little light source up here. Well, it's not really a light source. It's just a bit of light being filtered in from up here. I'm not sure where it's coming from or anything like that. It's just something in the background, I presume. But I'm just going to pop a little of that. Maybe a little bit of cadmium yellow as well. It just kind of mixes with the blue and it creates this beautiful soft greens don't it and it's just a lot of fun it really is i have to be honest i haven't had this much fun in a very long time just with painting just putting in these little lights like that, it's just so refreshing sometimes. And using the big brush all the way, it's just, it, it's refreshing from using a little pointy brush all of the time, isn't it? It just really loosens you up and... Let's just get the fan brush now and start softening this in nice and soft, look at that. A nice soft fan brush makes a world of difference, doesn't it? Let's go around in little circles and I'm going to give it a clean there now just because it's getting a little dirty. Let me just give it a good wipe and then go back in here.
and go up here and soften this out. So I don't know what you think about this so far. I think it's uh, I think it's going to be quite interesting when it comes to doing the flowers to see how this works with the flowers in in the later tutorial. It's going to be quite interesting, I think. Let's just soften it all out, and I might just put in those little bits of grass at the front as well. So let me just sit back now for a moment. I'm going to stand back here just for a moment and take a look. All right, look, I'm I'm happy enough with that. Uh, let's let's not get uh, let's not get greedy. Let's give the painting a chance and see where it takes us. I am going to get a small round brush. If I can just pick it up off of the floor, and I'm going to start putting in some of the grasses down at the bottom here. I'm going to go with a lot of grasses. So let me get plenty of cadmium yellow. And this needs to be a little bit on the thin side, okay, just to help it move around. A little bit of black and a little bit of blue. So I'm starting off with some quite dark ones early on. I'm going to mix that nice rich dark green and I'm just going to start Flicking a few of them in, like this. It's just really, I suppose, to give the flowers something on which to kind of sit on. Creating a base for the flowers. A little bit of cadmium yellow into that. Let's just add a few of these little squiggles. Now, it's not coming off my brush very well because this brush is quite hard at the moment. Um, apparently, it wasn't cleaned properly. So that was a big mistake on my part. I should have cleaned my brush properly. All I'm doing down here now is really just filling in this area just to create a blanket of green down here that's all i want to kind of uh, achieve so just take plenty of different shades of green pop in some little dabs of color just to suggest um little tips of buds okay just stuff, stuff like that you know what i mean you don't have to you don't have to pretend to say anything at all it's really just to add a little touch of interest into your painting uh, of course you can do a lot of this with the knife afterwards as well but uh, it's, it's nice i think just to i'm not losing those shadows you see when you put these in, it pushes those shadows kind of back into the background then, doesn't it? So I don't think it's bad for a part one so far. What I'm going to do is get very bold. I'm going to get some black paint, very watery, and some blue. And I'm taking a big risk with this now, big risk. I'm going to start putting in some real dark ones around here because I then want to add some very bright highlights to some of these. Take a touch of yellow in that. I just want to go really dark with, with some of them. Now, I have dropped my brush, but it's okay because I have plenty more. Plenty more where that came from. I always keep on to all my brushes. Um, even if they're really badly worn brushes, I always keep them because I know I'm going to use them for something eventually. And I always do. They come in very handy for rough work, you know. So I'm just going to stop. Okay, 
Okay, and I want to get some rich cadmium yellow. It's mixed in with a bit of green already, so it's like a rich green for all the world. It's like a very soft, kind of a rich, vibrant green. I want to put in this stem off of that just to finish that off with the shadow. So I'm just going to go like that. And we need to copy the shadow in order to get it right. I'm just going to go like that and down. Like that. And I can disappear down into all of these then. So with the shadow next to that, it's kind of starting to make a little bit of sense, isn't it? I won't worry about details just yet. Uh, we don't see much of this one here. That's kind of just disappear. Disappears down into the bed of grass, doesn't it? But what I want to do next is catch these with some very bright, rich highlights. And I think I'll just call this part one finished. Just to keep it simple. Let me get a small, fine, pointy brush, okay? This is size one. Very small, pointy brush. I'm going to go with some cadmium yellow and a little white. I just want to really catch some highlights on some of these stems and bits of grass. I go with slightly thicker paint. So let's just go and catch some light on these. Like that. Then clean the brush and go back into it again and catch a little bit of light there and a bit there as well. Already that just kind of brings to life, doesn't it? Really just jumps to life, I think. I'll try some more of that. That's a nice, nice colour. Let's get some more of that. And uh, go up here and just catch some of these with that very bright. Isn't that wonderful? A bit of white and a bit of yellow. Makes the world of difference, doesn't it? Um, maybe just catch a little bit on that. And then I want to just catch some bright light on some of those grasses down there. It's very important to clean your brush each time you do this because you're picking up the darker paint, you see. So we're just catching the tips. As if the sun's coming in, I'm just catching some of the tips of these grasses. Then I'll take some cadmium yellow again, fresh cadmium yellow, some white, very thick paint, very, very thick. I'm just going to catch some highlights on some of these little buds. I'm just going to call them buds. <laughs> they could be anything. They're just little splashes of colour on, on the, the painting. That's kind of all they are, really. Little splashes of colour. I'm being careful with some of them. I don't want to overpower the painting with some of them. That one, for instance, that was probably a little bit over the top. I'm just going to cut through that. And I suppose I could just leave it well alone, couldn't I? You don't have to go over the top of all of this. Do we? I'm going to add some shadow onto that. 
I'm going to go very dark. I may just go with a black and a blue. Let's see if we can just bring that stem to life. You see that bit of a shadow that's on the stem? It's really nice. How about that? And maybe a little touchable up here as well. Yeah, that's uh, that's not too bad. I think it needs to be a little blacker. It's almost in complete blackness, isn't it? Just that little, that little touch of the, the shadow there. Create a little bit of color just around it. And then just up here, and I think we're done. So my friends, I think I should just maybe stop at that and assess what I've done, take a look. And see where we go next. What do you think? I think that would be a wise decision right now just to stop. Let this set, let it dry and um, We'll crack on and do these flowers, I think, in part two. I might just... Now, look, I might ruin this. I might completely and utterly ruin this. But I just want to sharpen up some of those with a little darker colour. I know I'm probably going to ruin this now. I know one is telling me, stop, don't do it. Don't do it, Steve. But I think I need to just deepen just around there. I'll leave it at that, my friends. So part one is finished. I hope you can see me okay there. And I was very high up the camera because my canvas is so big. Part one finished. Flowers next. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I know I went into a bit of, quite a bit of detail, perhaps, and I kind of maybe overdid it in some parts, but you could just try to simplify it yourself. A plain background, don't worry about shadows if you don't want to. But the shadows kind of really caught my eye when I was looking at this photograph. They just grabbed me when I saw the shadows, so I thought I'd try it, and we'll see how it goes. I'll be right back with part two. Don't go anywhere.